Sometimes we can get so caught up in our feelings that we forget. It's not that we're being disrespectful. Just sometimes we forget the heaviness of your heart. And sometimes the agony of your mind. I came to talk to some real people today. I ain't talking to the church people today. I ain't talking to the religious people today. This message today is a little bit transparent for me. And sometimes in the constraints of your mind when the heaviness and the aggravation and the hurt and it seems to keep coming and coming and coming. One thing right behind the other. I'm talking to some people today. It seems like you can't catch your breath sometimes. And it's not that you don't love God. It's not that you don't trust God. But you sometimes cannot get, catch a darn break. I'm so tired of this stuff coming at me from the north, south, east, and west. And sometimes you feel the pressure that just weighs you down. I came to talk to those people today, those that are in a fight. I'm only talking to them. Would you wave your hand at me that the enemy keeps throwing ducks? I heard us say the fiery ducks just keep coming one after the other. And I know you. it's hard for you to see sometimes that God trusts you. It's hard for you to realize that he's still with you because your feelings... I'm going to jump right into my word. Y'all got me all, uh, all out of sorts. But let's just jump here to Psalms 119 and 71. I really want to teach this. I feel a real strong prophetic flow today. I want to teach. I really don't want to spend time preaching. But if y'all push me into preaching, we get the word out. That's cool too. But I need y'all to understand this because this word came to me. And, and it, it caught me in a place that, I, like I said, I got to be transparent. I'm going to say some things today. And it may shock you. It may not. But I realized that a lot of us are at this juncture. So when this word came, didn't know I was going to be ministering this today. This was my own personal declaration. Look at somebody. Sometimes y'all got to pay attention that the word comes to you first. I know we like to give it to other people. But it comes to you first. So quickly, Psalms 119.71. That's not my only passage. But I want you to stay on your feet feet while we read this and then I want to get into the text. Can I teach this like I feel it? I came to bring forth some liberty today. I came to open some eyes. If there's anybody you know that's in the battle of their lives, I need you to text them right now. If you know somebody's on the edge of losing their minds, I need you to text them right now. I don't care if you send them a YouTube clip or you send them Facebook. I need you to say, I need you to hear this because the word today is good for you. It's that it was good for me. And I'm going to challenge y'all to say it before you even know what I'm going to say. It was good for me. I need you to say it with an attitude because it has, should have an exclamation point. It was good for me. So I need you to get in contact with some people that are not in the building. Say, hey, I need you to jump on this. Some of the partners that's not on the live, get on right now. I need you to get the rhema word. Don't go back and look at it later. I need you to get it right now. I want you to get it like it is the breath coming from God Almighty. So here it is, Psalm 119. Lord, my time is moving already. Uh, Psalm 119.71, it says, It was good for me to be afflicted that I might learn your decree. Oh, just put, just underline that, highlight it. Just that right there by itself but took me out. And then it went on Psalms 119.71. Also, I, I need to read this in a different version. NLT says, my suffering was good for me for it taught me to pay attention. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, pay attention. Now you can take your seats. Let me get into the crux of this. Now y'all know I'm a talk back church. I want you to talk back. Those online, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I am excited about delivering this word because first I want to start here. There are moments in life when everything changes. Can we be honest? There are moments, things that happen in our lives where everything changes just that quick. You might have had plans and ideas and purposes to do specific things, but it can change just like that. Am I telling the truth in here? And as I've been in the middle of a series, and I, I didn't make it Wednesday because I didn't feel very good, but I want y'all to understand this, that those moments are defining moments. They are life-shifting and life 
life changing. They will mess with your mind and your psyche and your spirit and your soul. Those defining moments. And here it is right now. We're kind of right at that juncture. And everybody is kind of at that place of change. Why? Because we've just come through one of the most difficult seasons of our lives. Come on. We're still going through it, but we're on the other end of it. So I want you to understand this. Right now, our current situation. Now, y'all got to take some notes today. I know this ain't Bible study, but I'm going to give you some word today because I need y'all to get this prophetic insight. So our current situation, we're in a position where we're going to discover and rediscover. What does that mean? Because we were in a place for an entire year, uh, actually longer than a year, it's time for us to discover who we really are and rediscover who we really are. I need y'all to get this. It almost sounds like an oxymoron because we're at two different ends or two different spectrums. It's a period where we need to hold on and we need to let go. Oh, y'all better come on now. There's some things we gotta hold on to that carried us through, but there's some things you got to let go and we have to know the difference between the two are y'all hearing me today so here it is that we're at a place of worship and warfare now wait a minute it's a place where we worship God and we honor him and worship simply means to value him to understand who he really is and to esteem him where he really belongs but then we got to fight how in the world do we worship and fight at the same time but that's what happens when you're at that juncture where everything changes where everything challenges what you've always believed and what you've always thought and what you depended on we're right at that juncture are y'all with me today and then here it is we're at a juncture where we can experience the power of God and the pain at the same time wait how can I be empowered and experience pain at the same time if 2020 didn't teach us that I'm telling you hadn't learned your lesson yet but here it is where we learn how to be empowered. We learn to tap into areas that were lying dormant. We learn to tap into areas that we didn't even know we had access to. And at the same time, we've been in agony. And at the same time, we've been in pain. We've lost some things. We've been disappointed. We had some hurts. And if I can be honest, this week was a rough week for me. It was a rough week for me. Can y'all talk to me today? So here it is that I began to pray because I got such bad news on Thursday, I took the cover and just put it over my head. I mean, I wasn't even out the bed yet. And I was phone call after phone call. And I was like, this is not how my whole day is going to be. And I took the sheet and put it over my head. And God said, daughter, pay attention. He said, it was good for you to be afflicted. Now, y'all looking at me crazy because this is a passage that I've heard all my life, all my life. But honestly, and I'm talking to those that can be honest. I ain't talking to y'all that want to be honest. That don't make no sense. I'm talking to people. How in the world am I supposed to glory in my pain? How in the world am I supposed to celebrate my agony? I'm only talking to y'all. Can y'all wave at me? How is that? It sounds so good. See, we quote these scriptures, y'all. They sound good. We'll even shout on them. But how in the world do you do that? How do you say it is good for me when this thing is t attacking my mind? How do I say it's good for me when it's challenging everything that I believe? How do I say it's good for me when I can feel it in the pit of my gut? So here it is. He's, it says that we're at this period now where we are afflicted. And, and God said he began to speak to me about affliction. Now the transparent piece is this, is that I revisited a word. Y'all know Facebook brings back memories. Huh? Y'all know that, right? Well, um, Instagram does too. So what I did was, as a prophet, I released the word for 2020. And that word came back up. And when I read it, and I'm going to share it with you at the end when I read it it seemed like the total opposite of what we experience so the enemy started challenging my mind Bishop he started challenging my call he started challenging the anointing and said you said these things were going to occur and you began to decree these things for 2020 but it didn't look anything like what you said are you sure you're a prophet now I'm talking about me and y'all looking at me crazy are you sure you're a prophet are you sure that God spoke this to you 
because now you put it out there and something in me said you should delete it say you should delete it because you don't want nobody to see it and God said it was good for you it was good for you to be afflicted why because it made you pay attention to my decrees it made you pay attention to my laws it made you pay attention to the purpose I have for your life are y'all with me today so I want to teach right now in the middle of all this chaos and contradiction because this contradiction people said that he would turn my morning into dancing but I don't want to mourn I want to dance but I don't want to mourn I'm talking to the real people today see we like to sing it and we dance it but really you don't want to deal with the opposite part that would get you to the dancing nobody likes affliction Nobody likes pain, nobody likes agony, nobody likes affliction. But I needed to get to the point where David was when he says it was good for me. I was like, how do I get there? Because I'm not there yet. I like to think in my mind that I am. But if it gets bad enough, if it hurts bad enough, I don't know for sure if I'll be able to say it is good for me. Are y'all handling the truth today? So here, let me teach you a little bit about affliction. Get into the word. And I just want to share some things with you about perspective and the way we look at things. And an affliction is any condition or problem that produces suffering or pain. The Bible talks of two types of addiction, uh, affliction. I need y'all to write this down. Two types of affliction. There's an affliction that comes as a result of suffering uh, based on God's judgment on our sin. And that's Isaiah 53 and 4. You can can read that in your own time I, for my real Bible students. But there's a suffering, number two, that brings about a purifying of the believer as he is identified with Christ. That's the one I want to deal with today. When you can go through for the sake of Christ, when you can go through uh, for the sake of elevation, uh, elevation and evolution, when you can go through, and that's Romans 5, 3 through 5. Now, can I talk to you about how affliction is manifested because we read scripture but we don't quite understand how it applies to us and we come to church day in and many of us have been in church and for years I've been in church all my life but I, I, I came to realize what affliction really means and what it looks like and how can I get to the place that I can say it was good it was good for me to lose it was good for me to lose that job it was good for me to have my heart broken it was good for me say I'm talking about real stuff I'm gonna come on down y'all street keep looking at me like that I'm gonna come right on down your street where you're at the place of agony you have buried your head in the sands of sorrow and pain because you feel right now I have a right to feel like I do I have a right to say what I want to say because things ain't right in me I am justified but to transition to that place it was good for me so here it is that affliction is manifested in three ways. Please take some notes. The first way is mentally. And I need to break this down for you because we think affliction just means our bodies. It's mental. It's insanity. It's agony. It's anxiety. It makes you nervous. Sometimes you ever been around people that are just nervous for no reason? Come on, y'all, and talk to me. It is depression. It is multiple personalities. When you are up today and down tomorrow, it don't have to be extreme where you need medicine, where you got extreme mood swings. It's anger. It's rage. Oh, come on. It's defensiveness. When can't nobody say say nothing to you. You're always defensive. You think everybody's against you. That's an affliction. Y'all not hearing me today. Here when you're unreasonable, you have irrational thoughts. When your head just ain't right. You know, you're feeling some kind of way. And that's, that's what uh, affliction is manifested mentally. And so sometimes your head does not measure up with your heart. You mean well in your heart, but your head is contradicting everything that you know to be true. Number two, it is physical. So affliction is not only mental, it is physical. What does that mean? These are the ailments that we recognize. These are sicknesses that doctors diagnose when we don't feel good and things of that nature. Sometimes they are, are, are diagnoses that are terminal. Uh, that's what affliction is. When you can feel this pain and agony in your body, that's the most recognizable affliction. Number three is spiritual. 
And then y'all getting this today. I don't want to bore y'all, but y'all got to learn some stuff today. So mental is number one, physical is number two, and spiritual is number three. And number three, uh, when it happens spiritual, it causes a muteness. I need y'all to get this. There's a temporary loss of speech. Usually it is connected to emotional upset. That's Ezekiel 33 and 22. You write that down. But I want you to know sometimes when spiritually, when you are afflicted, that means your spirit is so heavy you can't even praise you want to in your mind and you go through the semantics of praise you know you clap you stand you cry you squeeze out a tear but there's still a disconnect there's a brokenness it's like you're mute you're opening your mouth but you can't hear nothing when I was a little girl now y'all might not know what this is sometimes you go to sleep let me help y'all sometimes you go to sleep and it feels like something holding you down and, and, and let me see if I'm talking to somebody it seemed like something holding you down and you make noise but can't nobody hear you it's like a muteness I know and so this is what happens in this affliction it's like I'm talking but it, it seems like God's not hearing me I'm talking and he's not responding it's like between the, the the weight and the pressure of the affliction it seems it has removed me from the real presence of God so here it is some of your strongest moments will be found in your weakest days are y'all hearing me today some of your strongest moments will be found in your weakest days now as David gave this decree Bishop he said it was good for me that I would be afflicted that I might learn your decrees now listen what what um helped me or brought me to this is calling it good getting to the place where I can look at every situation in my life and call it good whether it feels good or looks good or somebody else says it's good that I have the ability to do that to call those things that are not as though they were see we use that in a different analogy for stuff but can you look at every ounce of pain in your life and call it good can you find the good in it in your point of brokenness I know y'all wasn't gonna shout with me today so here it is that David says in Psalm 119 67 he says before I was afflicted I went astray but now I have kept your word see I need y'all to tie that together he said before my pain before my affliction sometimes we give devil the credit for some of the affliction but God says no sometimes it's me proving you he says I gotta push you and press you for the better you to come forward he says here it is David said before I was afflicted I went astray before my pain and disappointment I didn't do what I was supposed to do I was kind of all over the place now here it is you might not be familiar with that let me help you maybe you know about Paul can I do a quick comparison and then I'm going to get into the rest of this you might not know that much but let's talk about Paul in 2nd Corinthians 12 verses 8 through 10 I don't want to read all of them for the sake of time but Paul says that uh, it was a thorn in the flesh given to me uh, come on as a message of Satan to buffet me and so here it is a comparison between what David says and what Paul says when you read the rest of this scripture Paul says he says I boast in my infirmities he said I get to a place that when I'm crippled I give him praise he says when I'm hurt I give him praise it boast means I talk big about my God in the midst of my pain I say God please get me to that place wherever I find myself that I can give you glory so here it is that Paul says he says that God says my grace is sufficient he says and my strength is made perfect he says now I don't want you to think I'm dancing about the problem he says but I'm dancing about the strength that's coming as a result of the problem I need y'all to get this so when I looked up buffeted I got to give you this sit down sit down I got to give you this I got to give you this buffeted buffeted because that's sounds like a, a, a very strange word y'all not buffet like you go and eat a lot not that not buffeted okay so here it is buffeted means to strike repeatedly bishop just threw me out because it says to drive to force to move back to attack and to have repeated blows wait a minute so Paul is saying repeatedly didn't I tell you that from the beginning over and over and over things happen and I'm telling you this week I, I got um, signs of people being sick and I think three people died. Uh, three, three people died in one week. 
And I was like, okay, God, this is, this is a lot. But I thought about the rest of this. He says, therefore, I take pleasure. He said, I take pleasure in my infirmities, my reproaches, my persecutions, my distresses. I say, Lord, help me get to the place that it was good for me. Because if I can tell the truth, I'm not quite there yet. You can be a preacher. You can be a singer. But to get to that place, the thing that broke your heart, it was good for me. When you lost everything of value, it was good for me. That you can say it and you can say it with conviction. God help me get to that place. So here it is. Can I go a little bit further? Oh, I feel God here. So here it is with afflictions comes a daunting pressure. Can we be honest in here? See, the church taught us a long time ago to dance it off. But let me tell you something. There's some things you can't dance off. There's some things you can't clap off. There's some things y'all got to understand that it's a part of the process for God to bring forth your better. So here it is, these afflictions now. When they show up, three things happen. I told y'all gotta take some notes today. When the afflictions show up, I need you to lay hands on yourself. Cause some of y'all feel sorry for yourself right now. Because you got the diagnosis that you got. You say, why me? Why would God allow this to happen to me? Why me? Why do I have to experience this? Why me? I've done everything right. I know you don't want to admit it because your friends will know. Because it's good to talk good. But when you feel bad, it's hard to talk good. So here it is. When afflictions come, the first thing it does, it gives you a choice. You're going to decide to fight or you're going to decide to flight. When the afflictions show up. Number two afflictions make you remember or they make you forget are y'all getting this today number one you will fight or you will flight number two you will remember or you will forget afflictions come to everybody and number three you will persevere or you will be passive you will have to make a decision that you're going to use it as fuel to push you through or you will be passive are y'all getting this today so here it is, when affliction comes, we discover areas that have not been submitted to God. Can I switch a little bit here? Can I turn a little bit? Second Corinthians, this is my scripture. I got to say this because I need to turn by two or three times. It says we are troubled on every side, yet we are dis not distressed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. See, the church likes to preach that, but how do you get to the other side? what do you do in the midst of trouble so here it is now Ruth the first chapter can I teach this like I feel it where my Bible students at where my I ain't got no Bible students let me see your hands if you really like word so God I began to go into the word and I realized in the difficult place it's hard sometimes to see what God is saying Sometimes you don't feel like and you don't look like what God said. Am I telling the truth? Oh, y'all, maybe I'm not preaching. Maybe I'm preaching to the online. Sometimes you don't look like and you don't feel like what God has said about you. There is a contradiction. You said, I'm confused. I know he's saying this, but I don't look the part. I don't feel the part. I'm not even responding the way that I should. So here it is. I'm just going to read this quickly and I'm going to summarize for the sake of time. Now, it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Y'all hear the text now. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife was Naomi y'all know her so y'all might not know him but y'all know her so here it is and the names of their two sons was Malon and Chilion they were the Ephratites of Bethlehem of Judah Mm -hmm. And they went to the 
country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech and Naomi's husband died and she was left with two sons. Now I just want to teach this part right here because I need you to understand some things. See a lot of people preach about Naomi and Ruth. I mean if you heard that you probably skipped this part right here but this happened before Naomi and Ruth got together. Can I work the text like I feel the text? Why this is so important right here because I realize that Elimelech and Naomi was from Bethlehem and the way you pronounce this is Ephrata, okay? That's the way you pronounce it. That's the original name of Bethlehem. Now, for me to break this down a little bit, I found out that Bethlehem's name is the house of bread. Now, I need y'all to get this. It is the house of bread. Write this down. And so, like I said, the original name was Ephrata, which means fertile and few and fro um fertile and futile. That means it brings a lot of fruitfulness, okay? So here it is that Naomi and her husband, they leave, and they leave this area of fruitfulness, and they go to Moab because times were hard. Why? What happened? They were in a difficult place. They had affliction just like we had in 2020. So they left the place where they knew God would meet them. They left the place where they knew God would provide, and they went looking for something that they thought they needed so they went to a foreign land oh y'all better hear me today so they went to Moab and so I, I need y'all to get this why this is so important so they went to Moab and when they got to Moab her husband died I think that's an affliction so here it is sometimes we think we are doing the right thing and affliction comes upon us am I talking to somebody you know it's hard when you want to make decisions and you're not quite sure how to go about it so they went to Moab and the woman husband dies and so oh my god how can it get any worse and she stayed a little bit longer in that foreign land and the bible said both her sons died are oh, y'all not hearing me today all of this in a place where she thought she was supposed to be so here it is the house of bread you say wait a minute why would they leave in the first place now this is the problem can I talk about the problem so here it is that Bethlehem now y'all gotta get this this is two Bethlehems in the Bible in case you didn't know this is the one where Jesus was born and this is the one where David was born who was the future king of Israel this is only for my Bible students they'll get this today now because this was the birthplace of Jesus and I just told you that Bethlehem means the house of bread it makes sense to me now why he's called the bread of life this is only for my Bible students. See, everything happens prophetically and profoundly in the word. We skip over all the revelation that God has given us. So here it is that she left the place of bread and provision to go to a place that she didn't know. So the problem was at this season of affliction, this journey of affliction, the house of uh, bread didn't have any bread. Oh, y'all better hear me today. They had run out of bread and famine was in the place of fruitfulness. Wait a minute. This don't make no darn sense. How you gonna be called fruitfulness and bread and ain't no provision in this place? Oh, y'all better hear me today. So here it is. Oh, I feel Jesus up in here. I told you this is strong prophetic. This is what we look like. That oftentimes God tells us something or he leads us somewhere and it doesn't look like what we say of what we saw it was kind of like the word that God gave me I could see that thing clearly until 2020 showed up and then I was like wait a minute I started changing my mind about what God said I'm like but did he really tell me this so here it is we find ourselves in seasons and times of affliction well, we forget everything that God said. You said, wait a minute. You said I'm going to be the head. But I'm all the way at the bottom. Now, wait a minute. Y'all looking at me strange. You said I'm going to have an abundance. But I'm in the middle of lack. You said I will be whole. But I feel like I'm in parts. I don't understand God. I need some clarity. My life is a contradiction. 
You said I could create some things. You said I can decrease some things. But I am empty. I don't have anything in my hand. God, you said I had the power. But I feel powerless. You said I was a worshiper. But I can't lift a sound. You said I could shift atmosphere. But I can't feel no change. It was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good for me. Hallelujah. Let me come on back here. Let me calm down. See, the problem was, and this is what bothers me, like it bothers us. There's a word over each of us. And when God has said something about us, it's one thing to believe it in church. But when you go home in the midst of your realities, it doesn't measure up sometimes. It's an outright contradiction. I can't get no bread in the house of bread. I ain't calling God no liar. I'm just saying I don't see it. We start adjusting our lives to line up with what we see. Are y'all hearing me today? Let me finish the text. All my time is gone. So here it is. Sometimes you don't feel like. Sometimes you don't look like. What God is saying. And when you're in agony, it's hard to fight for the truth. Because if God said it, then that really does settle it. But when you're in agony, when you're in pain, it's hard to see it. It's even harder to say it. Are you with me today? You say, God help me get to the place of it was good for me every ounce of pain every ounce of agony for every dream that didn't come forth it was good for me for every vision that seems blurry it was good for me for every loss it was good for me y'all looking at me crazy for every broken promise it's good for me when they walked out and left me hanging they canceled the vows it was good for me for every plan that didn't work out the way I wanted it was good for me oh my god for every prophecy every prophecy spoken over my life that doesn't look like what you said it was good for me that I was afflicted they gave up they walked out it was good for me that I might learn that I might learn your decree and your plan and your purpose hallelujah can I have two minutes I just need you to see this oh my god I feel Jesus up in here listen I need you to prophesy this I need you to look at your troubles and say you won't have the last word I need you to look at your troubles y'all still looking at me I need you to put your hand on your hips and rear back and look at that heartache you won't have the last word look at that pain you won't have the last word I know you look like you got the upper hand right now cause you saw me crying but good it's coming out of this good it's coming out of this it was good for me it was good for me so here it is I gotta give you these why the affliction God's not mad at you why the affliction why the agony why the pain now I need y'all to get this I gotta give you these five 
Can I do it? Can I give you these five? I need you to understand. You might not trust you, but God trusts you. And sometimes it's so grave that it doesn't make any sense. That our psyche doesn't understand. Because our hearts don't understand. Our emotions are all over the place. And it makes us second guess if God is really in control if we can tell the truth up in here because it's first of you prayed for something and it didn't happen the way you thought it should you do questioning your mind but you might not say it to anybody but you do and that's what the enemy does he tap dances right there on your insecurity he makes you guess and second guess if what God said was really true are y'all with me today so let me give you these five you say what affliction because here it was that they were in a famine and they left this place to go to Moab and she experienced death after death and y'all know she had her daughter-in-laws with her and I need y'all to know that because of the release of bread back in the place where it was she did a u-turn and went right back to where she was from the get-go I need y'all to understand, don't allow famine and problems to cause you to walk out of God's provision. See, when we don't see it right where we are, it's quick for us to shift and change. See, she never should have gone to Moab because everything that she needed was in Bethlehem. And Moab was just a distraction. Y'all better hear me today. Moab was just a distraction. And see, sometimes things come right when you're low, right when you can't hear God. You know, because when you're in your feelings, let's be honest, you can't hear God. When you're in your feelings and emotions, when you're hurt and angry, and you say, I'm mad, I'm going through the process, I'm mad, I'm mad at God, but I ain't going to say I'm mad. And it shows up like this when you still come to church, but you don't give God an unconditional praise. When you don't open your mouth, really, that's connected to your spirit. You go through all the motions of praise that look like you're still connected, but your mind's so disconnected. That's what it looks like. I need y'all to get this today. Why the affliction? Number one, to build you. I need y'all to get this. Let me do this quickly. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Why? Because it made me pay attention to your decrees. I don't have time to teach the text about David because I'm out of time. But I wish I could tell you more about David's life and why this was such a declaration. Because bro went through a whole lot. He went through rejection and all that. And people like to talk about that. But brother had some character flaws. He had some issues. And so here it is that God allowed affliction to come. Number Number one to build you why because it's for what you're gonna need in the future I need you to write that down I am in the place I am right now because it's going to help what I what I need to do in the future and you got to open your eyes to see it number two to refine your character I, I need y'all to get this it helps shapes your character because we don't often know what we think we know we think we are loyal until opportunity comes for us not to be loyal we like to think that we wouldn't do certain things until the opportunity comes where we actually have a choice. So it refines your character. It helps reveal what's really inside you. You know, where you really are in God. And number three, it realigns you. Number one, it builds you. Number two, it refines you. Number three, it realigns you. Because uh, afflictions and problems and trouble in 2020 took a lot of us out of the will of God. Because when you're in trouble and you're in chaos and contradiction, you start adjusting your environment. You start adjusting your life to accommodate what you have. And I need y'all to get this. It's as simple as this. We've been trying to get some uh, Lysol wipes and, and things like that. Y'all know it, it's such a shortage. And I remember when there was an abundance. But now it's a shortage. Why? Because everybody's using them. And y'all got to get this. Y'all got to catch this so here it is that when you're in a place of chaos and, and, and you know contradiction you start grabbing at straws you start making stuff to, to try to uh, resemble what you really need you start creating stuff y'all looking at me like I ain't telling the truth I know I'm telling the truth you start
start adjusting even the way you praise and the way you worship and you start adjusting to your life you start living in fear you start compromising because things just ain't quite working out so he realigns you he realigns you he realigns you and so what he did was he allowed her to experience the loss of her husband and her kids to get her right back to the place where she should have been are y'all getting this today sometimes trouble has a way of putting you back in position with God number four he uses it to call you to go deeper because it's so easy for us to stay on the surface in a time like this you have prayed like you've never prayed before or you are lost it causes you to open your mouth and dig deep in word like you've never dealt before because you don't have access like you used to you can't depend on people like you used to everybody is tired and worn and those that usually pray you through can't even pray you through right now because they're worn too everybody's in the same boat same cycle over and over and over and you're like I can't get no help I am worn and I'm tired and here it is he says I need you to go deeper there's a revelation that I'm going to give you when you launch deeper into me this is not the time for you to run away this is the time for you to draw closer number five and this is the last one he's going to strengthen your faith do y'all remember what I said number one it is to build you number two it is to refine your character number three it is to realign you number Number four, it is for you to go deeper. And number five, it is to strengthen your faith. Now here it is, Ruth 1 and 6, and I'm done. Says, then Naomi arose with her daughter-in-laws that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard. She had heard. So we thought that was an urban term. What had happened was we thought we did that. But right here, she had heard. In the country of Moab, now she's in Moab, she heard the Lord has visited his people by giving them bread. <laughs> now y'all better hear me today. In your low, drunken, grieving stupor, you can hear God saying, I have bread for you. Oh uh, y'all, that, that's a place of restoration. Y'all better hear this and see this. That's a place of restoring. He's going to give you back everything that you thought you lost. And it's not in a physical sense sense it is the energy and the passion that you need to go forth are y'all not listening me hearing me today I know it's hard when you're low to get up and to give God what's doing to him and that's when you have to push yourself and Psalms 30 and 5 say weeping <laughs> weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning I came to tell you that it's morning time and not in the sense of a of a clock in time in a day he says it's time for you to come up out of darkness he says you are at the point of it was good for me that I was afflicted when I can look at my difficulty sometimes we cry sometimes we fight I need y'all to get this these are scriptures that we quote and dance and we know that all things yes even that all things no bishop, no prophetess, yes, even that, all things work together for my good, Lord help me, it was good for me, it was good for me, can I give y'all a bonus, y'all act like y'all need a bonus, bishop, I knew you would like this, the thing about it, Bethlehem in Ephrata. I like this part right here because I'm a Bible preacher. What I found out that it was so small that Joshua didn't even name it when they collected the cities. Remember when they had, the cities had to come together and they had to divide the city among the tribes. Well, Bethlehem, Ephrata was so small that they didn't even name it. Are y'all listening to me today? It was so insignificant. They was like, we're not going to even bother. But the Bible said that this is the land that is fertile. This is the land that's going to bring forth. And I realized that, wait a minute, out of this same city that they didn't even want to notice. This is where David came from. 
the king of Israel. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> this is where Jesus came from. <laughs> now, Jesus came out of the same lineage of Betha Ephrata, out of Judah. See, there's too much word for y'all. Y'all want to name it and claim it. But what I need you to understand, the prophet Micah, five and two, and this is what Micah said. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will be ruler over Israel. Wait a minute. Micah prophesies. Yes. Bethlehem went through trouble. They had affliction. People misdiagnosed them. Left them hanging. They didn't know the Messiah was coming up out of that. Y'all looking at me crazy. If you can look at yourself and your own situation, can anything good come up out of me? I'm insignificant. My problems don't matter. They didn't call my name. I seem small. Insignificant. They overlooked. Can anything good come up out of Bethlehem? Here comes Jesus. Now wait a minute. Y'all stuck on Naomi and Boaz. But don't forget, out of that line came Jesus. So if Naomi didn't go back to Bethlehem, she wouldn't have found Boaz. Are y'all getting this? She had to go back to the place of provision, to what God told you. I know you're in pain. I know you're in agony. Go back to what God told you. Can you remember? What God told you. Are y'all getting this today? I gotta quit. I gotta stop. I gotta quit. See, I said y'all gotta understand this. Can you see it? As God sees it. Now listen. The Bible said when Naomi came back, she was walking through the city and the people recognized her. And they say, is that Naomi? She said, don't call me Naomi. Why? Because I'm bitter. <laughs> don't call me what God called me. <laughs> I know my name. <laughs> I need y'all to get this. <laughs> I know I'm somebody, <laughs> but I don't feel like somebody. I've had loss. <laughs> I've had pain. <laughs> I've had agony. <laughs> so I'm changing my name. <laughs> call me Mara. <laughs> Cause I'm bitter. Cause I'm mad Cause I'm angry I got affliction Don't call me what God calls me I have adjusted To my situation I need y'all to get this I have adjusted To my situation So here it is They kept calling her By her God given name Naomi Keep walking until you see it. Keep walking until you sense it. Keep walking until you believe it in the name of Jesus. So here it is. And I'm done. I'm done for real. I need y'all to see this woman. I need y'all to see this woman. She had to get back to what God told her. It's not easy to do, but you got to be honest with God. So here it is. Can I share with you the word that I released in 2019 for 2020? This is what I wrote. And you can go out on social media and find it. This is what the Lord said. And the more I read it, I felt like Naomi. Oh, my God. Don't call me prophet. Oh my God, I can't see it. Oh my God, did God really say it? It's said number one, you are about to witness the power of God 
moving by his Holy Spirit. But when you see him come, he will stand in the midst of our nation. Be aware. He's moving about households, businesses and churches, organizations where there has been deadness and staleness. Are y'all getting this today? He is about to pour his spirit on the hearts of all those that have been crying out. He has honored those with sincere hearts toward him. Your testimony of faith, of healing, is being restored. Today, the most unrealized potential will come forth. You thought you'd be further than you are. Now, your increase will come from all directions. That is the word of the Lord. But 2020, now you understand my dilemma. When I reread it, I said my natural eye didn't see any of this. I said, oh my God. I started questioning. My name is the prophet. And God said to me, daughter, it was good for you that you were afflicted, that you might learn my decrees. Sometimes your best lessons come out your worst pain. Are y'all hearing me today? Sometimes your best lessons come out your worst pain. It was good for me that I was afflicted. I need you to open your mouth today. I'm done. This is how we're going to end this. I need you to make that declaration because there's a shifting in the way you see things. We got to see it from God's view. You have to have the tenacity. It was good for me that I lost. It was good good for me and I know it's not easy because you feel you have a right and you probably do deal with what you're dealing with but this is prophetic are you getting this today everything that has come against you everything that has come against you can you look at it it was good for me I know some people that have come through some difficult difficult challenging things like I said on this week I had some loss I lost some family members on this week I know some other people who lost some family members I know some people that lost jobs careers money lost hope faith people have walked away from God I know some people that said I can't do this no more it was good for me we often think we become our best selves when everything is wonderful. But the beautiful thing about this passage, I love that Naomi went all the way to Moab to lose. Biblically, I think she was there about 10 years, give or take. Lost everything that was important. And then it took Ruth to lose some things because Ruth is from Moab, people. If you didn't know. She said, I'm going to go back to you, to your country. Y'all remember we shout over that. But she had to give up. She lost her husband. She lost her culture. She lost her family. In hopes that I can get to, it was good for me. It takes a mature person and the faith to get to that. It was good for me. Through tears, heartache, it was good come on this is prophetic and I promise you will see things different if you muster up the strength to say it it was good for me yes yes in this low dark place cloudy place blurry place it was good for me 
Come on, people. This is so prophetic. You got to see it. I, I wanted this for my life. I wanted that. I wanted all these things. And it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. It didn't maneuver the way I thought it should. The plans that I planned didn't happen. This is now how my life was supposed to turn out. It was good for me. I came to the truth takers today. I saw a post. I'm going to pray and we're going to be done. From a young lady on social media. I'm not going to call her name, but I've seen her testimony be before, but it stood out this week. She shared that she had two kids by the age of 17. And she went on to talk about how many people had written her off and said that she'd never amount to nothing and all of this stuff. And all the things she's accomplished now. See, people will celebrate you on the other side of your affliction. But can you help me in the midst of my affliction? She began to share all the things that she's done. And her position was, I wouldn't do it any different. It was good for me because I am the person I am today because of what I went through. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's our decisions. And God makes it his plan to realign you. You need to catch that. It was good for me. You often hear us talk about the battle we've had. We just had loss. And I watched my husband go through the agony of losing his mother and trying to adjust to the loss. And he has to have his own journey. Because people think you're not humble and you're not sincere if you can look at it and see God. Because you're crying doesn't mean you're sincere. It doesn't mean that you're in brokenness. You, I have to see God. I have to change my perspective. I have to. If I truly believe that everything is in his hands, I can't say everything but that. If I truly believe that he's in control, and if I really feel like he doesn't make any mistakes, can I see God in this? Can I find God? My challenge today is that you can find God in your affliction. And sometimes your affliction is something that is lingering for years. It is something that has been happening for years. It's not just a current, um, my feelings hurt. It's things that were done, things that were not said, things that were said, things that should have been and they weren't. Afflictions are physical, they are mental, and they are spiritual. Can I pray with you today? I'm not going to lie, it takes a lot. I'm on this journey to see God, even in my disappointment. It's easier said than done, and the church does a great job of saying, just confess it and believe it. It's not that easy. Am I talking to some real people or am I just talking to me? Where the real people wave at me? The days of naming and claiming 2020 took them, y'all. It was good. Trouble after trouble after trouble. And I know you have to be honest with God. I said, I just can't catch my breath. I just, I just need you to, I just need you. Listen, if one more thing happened, I'm, I'm about to lose my mind up in it. It was good for me. Sometimes we've testified that this was God and then it was taken away from us. It was good for me. They said they would be with me for the rest of my life. It was good for me. This is based on what you can see with your spiritual eye. Are you thinking as we get ready to pray? I 
I know that this is in the house. This is such a different prophetic word. I'm talking to your spirit man today. I'm not talking to your flesh. I didn't, I didn't come to make you jump and all that. I want to get to the core because I know if I'm there, you're probably there too. God, help me to see it. Help me to prophesy to my situation. That's what the power of declaration comes. Let me prophesy to the situation as bad, as grave as it is. Help me to look at it. It was good for me that I may learn. That's what David said. He said, before that, I was all over everywhere. That thing happened to realign me. That thing happened to repurpose me. That thing happened to redesign me. That thing happened to shape me. It happened to make me. It was good. I'm going to ask you to put your mind on your struggle. I want you to bow your heads. I want to pray with you today. Father, there's no gulf between you and I today. This is truly an audience of one. You get to a place of brokenness where you realize there's nobody to impress. You don't have to always get it right or know the right things to say because sometimes you get to a juncture, you don't know what to say. We stand before you today and we've made reasons. Some of them are right. We put our feelings before you can't help how we feel because we are partly human but we need the spirit side of us right now to come to the forefront we need the spirit to prophesy to our situations because we don't have any strength to do it ourselves if we can be honest we're trying to hold it in and pretend like we're gonna be okay but deep down we're really angry and sometimes it shows up as withdrawing minimizing, isolating, but we're really angry. Sometimes we don't understand why we're going through what we're going through, why these things keep happening to us, especially when we feel that we have done the right thing and are doing the right thing. If we, the truth can be told, we sometimes do question you. If we can be honest, I know we were raised not to question God, even though that's not biblical. It says for us to ask. God, I can only be honest with you about where I really am. That's when healing and deliverance and freedom and liberty will really come in because you didn't change because of my situation. You didn't change because of my problem. You didn't change because of my issues. You changed not even in my place right this moment. I'm asking you to help me get to the place it was good for me. Transfer me to where David was when he said it was good for me to be afflicted. When Paul said, I glory, I boast in my infirmities. Why? Because I know you got me. I know you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear. I dance. I boast, I celebrate that you trust me to carry this weight. I don't trust me, but you trust me. Thank you, God, for helping me get to this point. I need to see your hand. I need to see your face. I need to experience your presence. I need to experience you for real. We're so quick to pick up and go on as business, business as usual, but in my brokenness, I need to see you. 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 Come on, people, and pray. Intercessors, I need y'all to pray that the shift that's going on in the house right now, it was good for me. I'm going to keep saying it until it makes sense. I'm going to keep confessing it until it becomes my reality. I'm going to keep saying it until it overshadows me. I'm going to keep saying it until I can stand on it. 
it was good for me. 